Hebrews chapter 4 Better commander than Joshua, and rest in the kingdom Hebrews for verses 1 to 8 believe, so they may enter into his rest in the kingdom. For colon 9-16 God rested on the seventh day, and they can rest in the kingdom. Hebrews is an exhortation to go on to perfection, and not to draw back unto perdition. Chapter 1 and 2, Jesus the Son of God is better than the angels. In chapter 3 and 4, he is better than Moses. Godly Israel should not follow the example of unbelief like those in the wilderness. The generation that will live during the tribulation is warned to be sure that they get into the kingdom. God knows if they believe because the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows the hearts of all his creatures. After our rapture, the tribulation will begin. At that time, it will not be a matter of Gentiles blessing of all of Israel, but those in Israel that believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who came the first time, is Israel's Messiah and King. Those Gentiles who bless the believing of Israel, and believe in Jesus Christ, will also be allowed to enter into the kingdom, Matthew 25 verses 31 to 40. God will pick up and resume prophecy, where he put his followers on hold. The parables explain different aspects of the kingdom. The remnant could hear them, but to the apostate unbelievers they were more difficult to be understood. In one parable Jesus promised to return and reward his faithful servants with cities to rule over, Daniel 7 verses 13 and 14, Revelation 21 verses 2 and 10. A certain nobleman, Christ, went into a far country, heaven, to receive for himself a kingdom, and to return. And he called his ten servants, and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy till I come, Luke 19 verses 12 and 13. In the parable of the householder and his vineyard, Matthew 21 verses 33 to 45, Christ reveals that the nation will be taken from the apostate leaders of Israel and given to a nation, singular. The nation will be the believing remnant in Israel, the little flock bringing forth fruits thereof. Isaiah 5 verses 1 to 7 explains this parable. Israel is the vineyard of God. Jesus told the religious leaders this parable while they were plotting to kill him, the heir, and take his kingdom. When Christ returns in Revelation 19 verse 1, John sees heaven open just like Stephen had. His weapon is the sword proceeded out of his mouth, Revelation 19 verse 21. This time the son is not just standing but comes to judge, James 5 verse 9. The father tells the son, to gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness, and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever, the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness, and hatest wickedness, therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, Psalms 45 verses 3 to 7. Joel said that the day of the Lord will be accompanied by wonders in heaven. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come, it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call Jeremiah 2 verses 30 to 32. Christ and his angels will fight against Antichrist, and his armies which is Satan, and his fallen angels. The world, under Gentile rule and Satan, is coming to an end. There is a Mount Zion in heaven, and a Mount Zion on earth, the city of David. Satan has one-third of the angels and Christ two-thirds, so who do you think will win? What does it mean to fear in verse for colon 1? How will God lead his people to the right place in the wilderness? Is Jesus in Hebrews for verse 8 a mistake in the King James Bible? What is the difference between the soul and spirit in for 12? How can the godly remnant come boldly before the throne? Hebrews 4 verse 1 Let us therefore fear, lest, a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Those who were in unbelief, 319, were eternally excluded from entering into the promised land, therefore we should fear, respect, reverence, and obey what God says, so we are not excluded from entering the kingdom. 
Let us therefore fear, let us be afraid that we will not enter into the kingdom, and make sure that what happened to those unbelievers does not happen to any of you. Do not come short of entering into his rest, the promised kingdom that is still available to you. The generation of Israelites that go through the tribulation period are to fear God lest any of you asterisk notice that the writer does not include himself because he has decided that nothing is going to stop him, squanders the opportunity left of entering his rest and come short of the kingdom. The writer knows he is writing to a future generation. Abraham was promised a land, a people, and a blessing forever, and later David was promised an eternal kingdom. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it, of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne, Psalms 132 verse 11. They are repeatedly warned against unbelief. There is individual and national salvation for Israel in prophecy. Individual Jews alive in that future generation need to believe, until the end of their lives, or the end of the tribulation, Isaiah 66 verse 8, 1 Peter 1 verse 5. The national salvation of the believing remnant will be at the second coming of Christ. The meek, the Israelites who believe and obey, will inherit the earth, Psalms 37 verse 11, Matthew 5 verse 5, Revelation 1 colon 6, 5 10. Christ will take the nation from the unbelieving religious leaders and give it to the believing remnant. Therefore say I unto you the unbelieving religious leaders, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation the little flock, bringing forth the fruits thereof, Matthew 21 verse 43. He will make his nation out of the believing remnant. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, Luke 12 verse 32 who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time, Christ's second coming. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season the tribulation, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire the tribulation, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, he is in heaven. Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, 1 Peter. 1 colon 5-9, the tribulation will be a fiery trial, and they should not consider it strange for happening because it was prophesied all along, 1 Peter 4 verses 12 and 13. James also wrote to the dispersed Hebrew believers that were going into the tribulation. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, James 1 verses 1 to 3. They were scattered according to the last part of the fifth course of punishment, Leviticus 26 verse 33. Scatter is like a code name for Jews, Deuteronomy 30 colon 3, 32 colon 26 that will be gathered by the angels of the Lord at his second coming, Matthew 24 verse 31. Israel's real regathering is yet future, and was not in 1948. The burning bush that burned with fire and yet was not consumed that Moses saw should be the flag for Israel. The bush is a type of the believing remnant that will not be consumed during the fiery trial. God will protect the believers in Judea in a place in the wilderness during the great tribulation, the last three, and a half years, Zechariah 3 verse 9, Malachi 3 verse 6. How will God lead his people to the right place in the wilderness? Probably by a pillar of cloud in the day, and a pillar of fire at night. In the kingdom, there will be a cloud on every dwelling place in Zion, Isaiah 4 verse 5. The primary turmoil during the wrath will be happening in the Middle East, but the rest of the world will also be affected. The Gentile nations that help the believing Jews will be blessed according to the Abrahamic covenant, and the others that did not bless believing Israel will be cursed. The Lord Jesus shall judge the Gentile nations when he returns, Matthew 25 verses 31 to 40. The Lord knows the heart of all people. The unbelieving nations will be cast into hell to await the day, when they are cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20 verse 15. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, Matthew 25 verse 41, dot. 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, 
not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Unto us was the gospel of the kingdom preached, and the children in the wilderness heard a similar gospel, the good news of entering the promised land. But the word that was preached did not profit, benefit, them, because the words they heard were not mixed with faith in them. They heard what God said, but they did not believe what he said. Paul also pointed out that the believers in mystery must believe God's word to them in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. The believers in prophecy must believe what God said to the Hebrews and recognize that Paul was writing to God's heavenly people, not to his earthly people. All the Bible is to the Hebrews except Paul's 13 letters which are not to them, nevertheless, they are for their learning. Every student of the Bible must rightly divide the scriptures, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The two main divisions mystery, Romans to Philemon, and prophecy, the rest of the Bible outside Paul's ministry, must be kept separate, with Acts being a transition book. Israel's kingdom saints are those saved before and after the dispensation of grace. Kingdom saints are anyone saved from Adam to Acts 15, and in the tribulation, Hebrews to Revelation. The believers at Kadesh Barnea heard what God said but did not believe and do it. Faith in God is necessary for salvation in any age, 11 colon 6. They did not believe God would bring them into the promised land and make them a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verse 6. Therefore, the tribulation saints should not make the same mistake. 3 For we which have believed Dio enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. The writer repeats what he said in a positive light, and includes himself. He is part of the believing remnant, the followers of Jesus, he wrote those who believe Dio enter into rest. If they believe they will absolutely enter into his rest. Their personal salvation is tied to their national salvation at his second coming. God's rest is the millennial kingdom when creation will be restored similar to how it was in the Garden of Eden, Isaiah 11,7, 65, 25. Their goal is that kingdom. The new generation of believers should join the group known as the little flock who will enter into the millennial kingdom rest if they endure to the end, Psalms 95 verse 11. The work of Jesus was finished from the foundation of the world. It was decided previously by a determinate council, and the foreknowledge of God, Acts 2 verse 23, C 13 27, 28, Luke 24 verses 25 and 26, 44 to 49, that Jesus Christ would die for mankind. The Godhead had decided that the Son would die in man's place to pay for man's sins. He was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13 verse 8. The Father was confident that his Son would not fail. Christ will restore what Adam forfeited. When Jesus Christ comes to rule there will be a peaceful rest as the angels proclaimed, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, Luke 2 verse 14. Zacharias had doubted what the angel Gabriel said to him about having a son, therefore, he was not able to speak for nine months until eight days after John the Baptist was born. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath, which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace, Luke 1 verses 67 to 79. The only way to enter into the rest that Israel has been waiting for so long, is to believe in the person who offers them that rest, their Messiah, Jesus. They are looking forward to a promised rest in a literal, physical, visible, earthly kingdom. The tribulation will be an awful time, but God said his rest shall be glorious, Isaiah 11 verse 10. Dot. 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, 
and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. God has spoken of his rest since Genesis. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made Genesis 2 verse 2. God created and made a paradise on the earth, and then he rested. He rested from his work on the seventh day after six days of creation to give men a seven-day pattern. God could have made everything in a day or less. Israel's rest begins in the millennial kingdom. Paul mentioned nine of the Ten Commandments but not the Sabbath. The Sabbath kingdom rest is for Israel. Instead, Paul said the Sabbath was a shadow of things to come in the kingdom. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which is a shadow of things to come, but the bodies of Christ Colossians 2 verses 16 and 17. God had decided to live with men from the foundation of the world. God spoke through the prophets and said he made the earth and planned to inhabit it and live with his people, Psalms 132 verses 13 and 14, Matthew 1 verse 23. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited, I am the Lord, and there is none else, Isaiah 45 verse 18. Six thousand years have passed, the number for men, and the last thousand years is about to begin. The idea that God is spending seven thousand years to decide who will live in the new heaven and new earth with him, is called the millennial day theory. There have been nearly two thousand years since Christ's death on the cross. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day, 2 Peter 3 verse 8. The Lord is long-suffering, and delayed the tribulation and inserted the dispensation of grace to save another group, which also allowed Jews to become members of the body of Christ if they believe the gospel of our salvation, 1 Corinthians 15 colon 3, 4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, 2 Peter 3 verse 9. I am not saying that the mystery was foretold in the Old Testament, but that there was a gap of time written about by Daniel between the 69th and 70th week, and by Hosea. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn a wrath, and he will heal us, he hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, possibly two thousand years, will he revive us, make them alive to him, in the third day he will raise us up or resurrect us, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter second coming and former first coming rain unto the earth, Hosea 6 verses 1 to 3, dot. 5. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. 6. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. 7. Again, he of the Holy Ghost through David limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. 8. For if Jesus and Joshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. In this place again refers to Psalm 95 verse 11, it said, If they shall enter into my rest. This was written in that psalm after those that were in unbelief died in the desert, so the writer concludes David must have written this about another rest in the future. It was Jesus the Son of God that was speaking for the benefit of the tribulation saints in David. He set a definite date, today after so long a time, 2000 years. Moses lived about 1,500 years before Christ and David about 1,000 years before, therefore about 500 years after Moses. In the process of this letter, the writer is teaching the readers how to think when they study the Bible. A certain day and today is their future, after our rapture, their salvation opportunity in the tribulation. The certain day is the seventieth week of Daniel when an opportunity still remains for the people of God to enter his rest in the kingdom. Gentiles who believe the gospel of the kingdom, and bless the believing remnant, will also be saved into the kingdom. The tribulation is called the night. For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life, weeping may endure for a night the tribulation, but joy cometh in the morning, Psalms 30 verse 5. 
The tribulation saints will be able to count the days until Christ's second coming after Antichrist signs the covenant. They recognize the signs, but may not know the hour, Matthew 25 colon 13, 26 colon 45, Mark 13 verses 32 and 33, if it is morning, noon, or night that he comes, Daniel 12 verses 11 to 13, Matthew 24 verses 36 and 42, 44. It will be dark. His coming will be like the sunrise in the morning. His glorious shining bright light will be dramatic when he returns, 2 Thessalonians. 2 colon 8, Matthew 24 verses 27 and 29. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen, Revelation 1 verse 7. They will look on him whom they pierced, Zechariah. 12.10, those to whom it was preached the first time, forfeited their chance. In verse 4 colon 8, Jesus is a reference to Joshua, just like in Acts 7 verse 45. Is Jesus in these verses a mistake in the King James Bible? Almost all modern Bibles change Jesus to say Joshua, including the NKJV and the Amplified Bible. The King James Bible is not in error it is the perfectly preserved Word of God, and is always right, Psalms 12 verses 6 and 7. The King James Bible is our final authority. We do not correct the KJB, we let the KJB correct us. Jesus, Jehovah Savior, is the Greek equivalent of Joshua. Both Joshua and Jesus are captains of their army, Joshua 5 verses 14 and 15. The King James translators alerted us to Joshua's leadership being a type of the future leadership of Jesus Christ. Jesus will take them through the tribulation into the eternal kingdom. In the modern Bibles, the connection between Joshua and Jesus is removed and the cross-reference between Joshua's actions and Jesus' actions is severed. Joshua brought them into the promised land, but Jesus Christ will bring them into the kingdom, Jeremiah 16 verses 14 and 15. When he returns, Jesus Christ will take back the land from his enemies and give his friends rest in the Sabbath kingdom, unlike Joshua. Just like Caleb and Joshua were the only spies of the twelve that entered in the promised land, Numbers 1430, 26,65, a remnant will be saved into the kingdom. They should listen to the voice of the God who is writing this letter to them. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, Hebrews 12 verse 25. Although God gave Joshua and the children of Israel the land he had promised and rest from their enemies, Joshua 21 verses 43 to 45, Joshua did not give Israel the final rest, but Jesus will. There remains another future, my rest, opportunity of God in the kingdom. Psalms was written about 1,000 years before Christ was born and the Psalms are almost all prophetic about the tribulation and the kingdom. Many Psalms are quoted in Hebrews. In contrast, the body of Christ can rest in the finished work of Christ on Calvary, and when we get to heaven, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7. 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Their work is to enter the kingdom. Once the believer has entered the kingdom they can rest. When they have finished the requirements for eternal life, they will no longer need to work for it. They can rest in the kingdom, just like God did after his work was completed. Having entered the kingdom, they are guaranteed eternal life in the new earth. However, ceased from his own works also means that the person has trusted the work of Christ and his righteousness, Isaiah 54 verse 17, not their own work or their own righteousness. They have stopped trying to be righteous by their own work and trusted in Christ's work on Calvary. 11. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Let us Hebrew believers therefore labor, Strive diligently and exert ourselves to make sure to enter into his rest in the kingdom, lest any man fall, fall from faith into unbelief, after the same example of unbelief as those whose carcasses fell in the wilderness. They labor by studying the word of God and by obeying it. They could lose their salvation by committing the unpardonable sin of worshipping the beast and taking his mark, Revelation 14 verses 9 to 11. 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
The word of God that Christ is speaking to them is alive and active, and powerful, all they need to get through the tribulation, and sharper than any two-edged sword, the two-edged sword can cut both ways, piercing the sword has a sharp piercing stabbing point even to the dividing between soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner the word is reading and exposing and sifting, and analyzing and judging, the very thoughts and intents of the heart, the soul and the heart, has a mind. God, the judge, knows everything about his creatures, people, angels, cherubim, etc. So, no creature can hide from him in any way. It is his powerful word that can discern between the thoughts in their minds, and what they intend in their hearts to do with God's instructions to them. God's word will do what he said it would do, 2 Chronicles 28 verse 9. How does his word pierce the inner man and divide between the soul and spirit, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit for twelve? The word of God can divide between the soul and spirit, the inner parts of a man, and the joints and marrow his body. Man is a tripart being, spirit, soul, and body. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians. 5.23, when we believe the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, the Spirit of God unites with our spirit. The goal of the Christian life is to be controlled by the Word of God, 1 Corinthians 2.16. The Word of God gets into our mind, spirit, Ephesians 4 verse 23, as we read or hear it, when we believe the Word of God it goes down into our heart, soul, Proverbs 23 verse 7, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. As we believe the word of God it can move the vessel body, of our spirit and soul, inner man, Ephesians 3 verse 16, and do the will of God, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. Paul wrote many things to the body of Christ about the soul and the spirit. The word for Ephesians 2 verse 8 is similar to therefore which draws a conclusion. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, we were spiritually dead to God in the past. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, we were swept along with the rest of fallen humanity, who were influenced by Satan, dot, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, it is Satan's spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, the unbelievers, dot. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We used to be one of them before we were saved. Before we were saved, we were under the control of the flesh, our souls were fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and our dark minds, Ephesians 4 verse 18. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as the rest of the lost people in the world. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, but God, loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved winky face. Even when we were dead in our sins has quickened us together with Christ, made us spiritually alive. It was by his grace that we are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God already sees the body of Christ believers as seated in heaven, a done deal. That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. God can demonstrate how really rich his grace was toward us in the body of Christ, as the ages of eternity roll along. For by grace are ye saved through faith, by believing the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, it was not anything that we did, Jesus Christ did all the work. Salvation is a gift. He bore our sins and gives us his righteousness, Romans 3:22, 5:17. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Dot. Not of works, lest any man should boast. We did not have to work, we just believed, therefore no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God has created us in Christ Jesus for a purpose which is good works, which he has previously appointed that we should do. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10. This part of the commentary was written with help from Pastor Tom Brescia's teaching on Hebrews chapter 4. The word of God they are reading now is reading them, and knows the deepest parts of their hearts, if they believe or are in unbelief. The word of God can bring conviction and correction. The Bible will keep you from sin, 
or sin will keep a person from the Bible because they do not want to stop their sin. His word will judge those that reject it. He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day, John 12 verse 48. We cannot worship God without the Bible. We do not know God, except through his word. God is not what we think he is, he is what he said he is. We need to believe what God said so that his word can work effectually in us, 1 Thessalonians. 2.13, we need to be skillful in the use of God's word because we fight Satan's false doctrine with God's sound doctrine. God has magnified his word above his name, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name, Psalms 138 2b. God has preserved his word. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever, Psalms 12 verses 6 and 7. We need to read and believe the words exactly as God said them, and not change his word, but let his word change us. God's word is so powerful that it can raise the dead. When Christ raised Lazarus, he had to specifically use his name, or many would come forth, John 11 verse 43. At the rapture, when he comes for the dead and living in the body of Christ, he will also be specific when he shouts for the body of Christ to come up. 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God knows who believes him. Asterisk notice the transition from the word of God in 412 to God in 413. Jesus is the word and he spoke the living word, they have the same attributes and cannot be separated from each other. When he returns, he will cut asunder his enemies with the two-edged sword of his mouth, Revelation 1 16, 19 15. Out of Christ's mouth comes judgment. There is not a creature, man, angel, cherub, animal, etc., that exists that is not manifest, evident, revealed, in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do, everyone will give an account to God, the judge. I the Lord search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings, Jeremiah. 17.10, they are to share what they know so others can also enter in, Psalms 40 verses 8 to 10. They need to prove their faith by their works, James 2 verse 24. The heart is exposed to God, Proverbs 15 verse 11. God detected the iniquity in Lucifer's heart. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in the Ezekiel 28 verse 15. Everything is naked before him, Job 26 verse 6. We are laid bare and naked, open before God like a slaughtered animal that is flayed open and prepared for grilling, 2 Chronicles 6 verse 30. We cannot hide from God. David wrote, Whither shall I go from my spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me, Psalms 139 verses 7 to 10. When Abraham offered Isaac and was about to slay him, God saw that Abraham believed his words, forever, Genesis 13 verse 15, which necessitates resurrection, Genesis 22 verse 12, dot. 14 Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We have such a high priest, that by himself purged our sins, 1 colon 3, and he is Jesus the Son of God. He has ascended into heaven and made reconciliation for their sins, 2 colon 7. Understanding then that we have such a great high priest that has been tempted, tested, like them, he is able to sympathize and knows everything about them. The writer tells them plainly that the high priest they have is the Son of God. Jesus the Son of God has passed into the heavens, so let us hold fast our profession. Their profession is to be a kingdom of priests, but their profession of faith is that they believe what Peter told Jesus Christ, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Matthew 16 verse 16. Their high priest is Jesus Christ the Son of the living God, and they are a royal priesthood, Matthew 16 verse 16. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. They should hold on to that profession while their high priest is gone, 
and not take the mark of the beast, Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18. They are to be motivated by their high priest's example. As we will learn in Hebrews chapter 9, Christ has entered heaven itself and offered his own blood, 9 colon 24 dash 26, 13 12, for their sins. 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. As the Son of God experienced what they experience in the tribulation, he was hungry, weary, and betrayed. Eve was tempted by Satan and failed. Like Eve, Jesus Christ was tempted in the same points, but he did not fail because he is the Son of God. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world, 1 John 2 verse 16. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize, but one that is sensitive to their feelings and weaknesses. For he has been tempted in every respect as we are. But he was without sin, and did not, offend in one point, James 2 verse 10. Our high priest knows what we are going through. When he was tempted, he did not sin. Jesus Christ knows they are afraid, but they should not give in to their fears, but trust what God said to them about eternal life in the kingdom, Luke 12 verses 4 and 5. 16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Their high priest Jesus has entered in before the Father on the throne of grace to make reconciliation for the sins of his people. Let us come boldly before his throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, because Jesus Christ was the perfectly satisfying sacrifice, propitiation. Let us ask the high priest to help us. The writer urges them to take a step of faith and reassures them that the way into God's presence is clear. Their hearts can make the decision and receive his righteousness, Isaiah 54 verse 17. Romans chapter 10 has to do with the Jews being saved into the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace, but the principle still applies. For with the heart of the soul men believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth of the soul confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, suffer judgment at the great white throne of Romans 10 verses 10 and 11. The mouth of their soul and their heart can make the decision to believe in Jesus Christ's sacrifice and resurrection and say, I believe. It is faith that saves, but there has to be a conscious acknowledgement of that faith. Upon salvation, the believer instantly receives the righteousness of Christ, his spirit in them. Mercy is not getting what we deserve, grace is getting what you do not deserve. Grace is all that God is able to do for the believer because of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary. Christ has made it through, and as their high priest, he will help them to do the same. They can understand where he is, and what he is doing. Their high priest is sitting on the throne of grace on the right hand of the Father, and they can boldly come before him to obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, John 1 verse 17. God will graciously help them. The throne in heaven has become the throne of grace, not a throne of judgment. The throne of grace is in heaven where Christ is sitting now, not in the earthly temple in Jerusalem, 10,19-22. It is by God's grace that this generation in the tribulation has the chance to believe and receive eternal life in the kingdom, 1 Peter 1 verses 10 and 13. They can obtain mercy of the one that is their high priest and find grace to help them as they suffer for their faith in the tribulation. They have the comfort of prayer and the assurance of the scriptures. It will take boldness to be part of the group that believes during the tribulation because even the members of their own family will distance themselves from them and some will report them to the authorities. Luke 12 verses 52 and 53. But as holy brethren they can fearlessly and confidently come boldly before the throne of grace and receive God's unmerited favor to obtain mercy, his kind compassion, and find grace, undeserved kindness, to help in time of need. The Three Circles Mankind is made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. The Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground, body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, spirit, and men became a living soul, Genesis 2 verse 7, Job 27 verse 3. God works from the inside out, 
I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord, 1 Thessalonians. 5.23 What happens when a person is saved in our spirit, soul, and body? At salvation, five things happen. To describe these, we can use the acrostic cribs, circumcised spiritually, Colossians 2 verses 11 and 12, regenerated, Titus 3 verse 5, indwelt by God, Colossians 1 verse 27, baptized into Christ, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, and sealed with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1 verse 13. Satan works from the outside in. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly body, sensual soul, devilish mind, James 3 verse 15. Before salvation, the mind of man is devilish when it is connected with the spirit of this world. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, Ephesians 2 verses 1 and 2. God has set us free from being ruled by the sinful flesh. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness, Ephesians 4 verses 17 to 19. Every decision, choice, we make is a spiritual decision. Satan could not see that God breathed into Adam a spirit, and a soul, Genesis 2 verse 7. Elihu told Job, but there is a spirit in men, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding, Job 32 verse 8. Our emotions think the things in our minds are real, this is the reason a movie makes us cry. Our emotions are governed by the mind and react to circumstances. Our flesh, body of sin, is the default position if we don't walk by faith in God's word. We must understand the word by the spirit of our mind and believe it in our heart, 1 Thessalonians 2.13 Dead Dark Defiled At salvation Christ's spirit joins with our spirit, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. As sinners, we were the above row of verses, but we became the bottom row. Ephesians 2 verse 1, Ephesians 4 verse 18, 1 Timothy 1 verse 10. 1. Alive 2. Light 3. Our body will be replaced. Titus 3 verse 5, John 1 verse 4, Ephesians 5 verse 8, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 52 to 54. Our spirit is in our mind, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, Ephesians 4 verse 23. The soul is in the heart. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he, Proverbs 23 verse 7. The body has five senses. The dead sinful flesh resides in the body, but it has been separated from the soul and spirit by the operation of God. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Colossians 2 verses 11 and 12 both our spirit and soul have a mind. The spirit in our mind communicates the truth of God's word to us to the mind in our soul. When the will of the soul chooses to believe God's word, it goes from the mind in our head into the hard drive of the heart soul. The emotions of the soul connect with the body and puts the body in motion to do God's will. Sons of God need to be ruled by the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16, so we can do good works for God. The Three Circles is a summary of the teaching of Pastor Richard Jordan of Shorewood Bible Church in Chicago, Illinois. This is the end of Part 4 of Missing the Rapture, Jacob's Trouble.